Food deception. How Americans are buying fake food. How much of what you eat do you think is fake? 10%? 20%? It might actually be more than you think. There has been an increase in food deception or fraud in recent years. According to the Global Food Safety Initiative, fraudsters motivated by financial gain covertly enter the international food market using a number of techniques, including counterfeiting, diluting, substituting, and mislabeling food products. Not only is this costing the FDA $40 billion annually and impacts at least 1% of the world's food business, but it could also be causing us health problems. So how do we stop it? And will you even be able to tell if you're eating fake food? Hello and welcome to Finance Sense, where we cover all the latest trends in the financial markets and the economy. Your kitchen cabinets may not contain the food you think they do. In this video, we will be sharing with you how food fraud or deception manifests itself in the market and how you can avoid getting duped. So, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment below if you enjoyed watching, and turn on the notification bell to keep posted. Now, let's start. Food deception or fraud is the process and practice of selling food products that have been tampered with in some way. This may be done to increase their value, change their taste, or increase the profit made from them. Food deception includes counterfeiting, diluting, substituting, and mislabeling. It not only hurts customers' wallets, but also jeopardizes their well-being and safety. Senior Manager Christy Lorvik of the U.S. Pharmacopeia says, We might not be aware of the entire impact of food fraud since so much of what fraudsters do is concealed from us and has been for generations. Moreover, as reported by the Food and Drug Administration, at least 1% of the worldwide food sector may be impacted by food fraud, costing as much as $40 billion annually. Furthermore, according to the Grocery Manufacturers of America, 10% of U.S. commercially available food is compromised. 1 in 10, to be exact. Leaving the supermarket with more than 8 things in your cart increases the likelihood that you have fallen victim to food deception. Food deception or fraud is referred to by the FDA as Economically Motivated Adulteration, or EMA. Economically motivated adulteration happens when someone purposefully omits, removes, or replaces a valuable ingredient or component of a food. As stated by Christy Larvik, it is a financial impact on the customer and the food producers, but it might also have an adverse effect on public health and safety. It deprives us of nutrition, can and has killed people. After years of investigation into food fraud, Larry Olmsted released his book, Real Food, Fake Food, in 2016. He stated that as he worked on his book, he came to define fake food as anything you purchase that is not what you thought you were buying. Whether it is legal or not, you are being misled in that situation. You're purchasing something that isn't what you expected. Olmsted went on by saying, Fraud occurs more frequently with more pricey foods. Take, for instance, the extra virgin olive oil in your kitchen. Food deception frequently occurs when the less expensive oil is mixed in with a more expensive oil, but the label still says extra virgin olive oil. According to Lorvik, olive oil has been tampered with for a long time because of its high value and great demand. In addition, as explained in an article in NBC News, fraudsters could add beta-carotene to give it taste and perhaps they'll add a little chlorophyll to give it a slightly greener hue. So you now have an inexpensive, lower-quality oil. Let's now consider the spice business as another industry susceptible to deception. Consider an expensive spice such as saffron. Even a small quantity might cost you $20 at the supermarket. According to the FDA, saffron can be adulterated with plant stems and marketed as the same product. Moreover, Olmsted stated, Anything that's kind of tinted orange, brown, and powdered up may be passed off as turmeric. Then there's fish. The FDA warns that fraud in the seafood industry can occur when cheaper fish species are used instead of more expensive ones. Olmsted noted, if you're an expert cook or fishmonger, you can identify a red snapper just by looking at a fillet, but 99% of customers can't. White fish make up the majority of our diet. Given the number of substitutions, every fillet appears to be identical. 
law requires FDA to examine 2% of imported seafood, which is, in my opinion, a very, very low standard. The United States imports up to 85% of its fish. Hence, in the search for fraud, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and U.S. Customs officials rip open containers carrying frozen thigh fish. Meanwhile, it's important to note that the first step in combating food deception is identifying its origins. Risks associated with food consumption might be either intended or unintended. Unintentional risks include those related to food quality and safety, such as unintentional foodborne diseases. The CDC estimates that around 50 million Americans suffer from foodborne diseases each year. One in five of them, or 20%, can be recognized. In other words, we don't know what 40 million individuals a year are eating that is making them sick. A reasonable assumption would be that fraud plays a role in it, Olmsted remarked. Then there is intentional. That is where food deception meets food defense. The motivation behind food deception is financial gain, whereas the motivation behind defense is harm. Olmsted further elaborated, If you can change a ton of coffee into one or two tons by adding some inexpensive filler, you've just raised your revenues by 20%. Additionally, these goods go through a lot of hands. Small producers are followed by large trucks, tankers, boats, and processing facilities. It's not always the big corporations you purchase coffee from that are taking advantage of you. Along the road, it could occur in a variety of ways. Even the FDA admits that it is impossible to predict the frequency of this fraud or its financial impact. In addition, lying about an animal's origin, dilution, or substitution has been the most often perpetrated fraud during the past 10 years. The value is also lost when a food component is purposefully omitted, eliminated, or substituted in its entirety. And that substitution may be something that isn't food. 14% of all food fraud occurrences that have been reported have involved non-food items. Lorvik said, The pandemic has given us an opportunity to focus on supply chains and compelled us to. For instance, labeling fraud dramatically increased during the pandemic in 2021 to 20% of the various forms of fraud that were done and reported. Director of Food Fraud Prevention Think Tank John Spink said, You know, if we were fully aware of it, why hadn't it been resolved? The crucial factor was that we weren't emphasizing prevention. If we avoid food fraud properly, it is boring. We're not chasing down criminals. Rather, we're the fire marshal inspecting smoke alarms and exits. Spain further stated that every product deception and every case of food fraud is prohibited by law in some way. Before the FDA was established, food manufacturers were essentially free to add anything they wanted. However, food safety rules came years later with the Meat Inspection Act and the Pure Food and Drugs Act, which prohibited contaminated and misbranded food products in order to protect consumers. This eventually led to the establishment of the FDA or Food and Drug Administration. Since then, laws have been passed to promote food safety regulations, such as the Food Safety Modernization Act, which was signed into law in 2011. On the other hand, some businesses purposefully lie on labels. It might be challenging to prosecute the fraudsters who commit the crime. After all, they're actively attempting to avoid being discovered. Consumers can utilize a five-question survey provided by the Food Fraud Prevention Think Tank while making food purchases. First, what kind of product is it? Be mindful of the products you use on, within, or plugged into your wall, said Spink. Next, quality. Are the product's differences noticeable to you? If you can't tell the difference, you're more likely to fall victim to fraud. Third is a supplier. Do you know either the source or the retailer? Do you trust them? Fourth, are you purchasing this item online? When you buy online, the supply chain may be even more obscured. How did you learn about the website? Is it trustworthy? Finally, number five, complain. According to the Food Fraud Prevention Think Tank, Customers will want to know if the retailer is legitimate. The FDA also uses consumer reports. The methods con artists use to create fake food products have advanced over the past few decades. Our methods for identifying a fraud must be improved, 
as should our test procedures and standards, Larvik remarked. As a result, the United States Pharmacopoeia Convention provides a framework for businesses to recognize their vulnerabilities. Additionally, Olmsted said, The food sector should just be concerned with producing food. It shouldn't be concerned with monitoring its suppliers or looking over its shoulder. And that will result in the production of more food, better food, safer food, and cheaper food. Alright, that's all for this video. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on our videos. Here at Finance Sense, we'll make sure you're up to date on everything happening in the world's economies and financial markets. Keep yourself safe and never stop educating yourself. We'll see you in the next video.